All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the sixth session of Tokyo Red. Uh, if this is your first time seeing Tokyo Red, uh, it's basically a continuing cyberpunk red campaign set in Tokyo rather than Night City. Uh, it is a tabletop role-playing game, which if you're not familiar with those, you'll figure it out pretty quickly by watching us. And uh, for those of you that might be video game savvy, uh, yes, the setting of Cyberpunk Red is in the same universe as the anticipated 2077 Cyberpunk video game. Uh, if you really want additional details, uh, Red is set between the old 2020 tabletop role-playing game and 2077. If you want an actual date, 2050, but enough on that. Uh, we've already had five successful sessions where we've covered missions found in the Jumpstart Kit for Red as well as Homebrew missions. Uh, but in particular, we've just had a campaign branching moment in our last session, session five. Definitely recommend you guys checking it out. Uh, half of our edge runners have joined up with the Psyche Division, uh, the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Cyber Squad, meant for anti cyber psycho action. Basically, they've gone legit and they get to play with a lot of cool toys. And I think there's a lot of potential here. Uh, so I mean, I hope that means we're going to have a bunch of fun. Um, before I get to that, though, I have to do a little bit of shilling and then two shout outs. So on the shilling front, um, I'm still searching for a new job. I did get an interview, hopefully for next week. So maybe that'll go through. I'm hoping. Um, but in the meantime, it means streaming and Patreon are sort of my primary sources of income at the moment. Uh, that means whatever support you guys can provide, whether it's a follow, sub, patron, donation, whatever, greatly appreciate it. Just remember to take care of your, yourselves first. Um, as far as shoutouts are concerned, I am currently recruiting uh, for a Tuesday game of Star Trek Adventures. Uh, no prior experience with either Star Trek Adventures or really role-playing games in general is required. Uh, you simply just have to be slightly bit of a Trekkie and a willingness to learn. Uh, if you're interested in applying for that, there is a link on my Twitter. It should be the pinned post. Uh, the second announcement I have is that next Thursday is when the Vampire the Masquerade game I'm running, Miami by Night, will take place. It runs at 10 p.m. Eastern, and I'd love it if you guys came out and supported that. Now, with that all out of the way, we can get to the good stuff. And uh, if you're new, we have a bit of a tradition in this particular group, mainly that we start each session with some form of a current event monologue that ties into the overall session in some way. For Cyberpunk Red, that means reading off a scream sheet. Now, scream sheets are basically slick, flimsy newspapers that are high-speed printed uh, on demand from data terminals across the city. These are part in-world news articles and part adventure seeds. It'll make sense once you see one. So without any further ado, uh, McCall, if you could take away for this week's scream sheet. All right. <clears throat> Japan Today. TP or TMPD receives new equipment from Arasaka. Six hours ago. After the cyber ah, after the cyber psycho tragedy last month that saw a casualty count of over 100, there has been a heavy push to ensure that such a thing never occurs again. To that end, the government has authorized a new budget for the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, specifically for the Psyche Div. The head of Psyche Div, Chief Cabarillo, confirmed that a large requisition order has been placed with Arasaka. Though she was vague as to the actual equipment on order, Chief Rio did admit that the Type 17K Guardian Assisted Combat Personal Armor was included. This Type 17K has traditionally been custom designed for police forces the world over. The Tektropia model 009 Volt Pistol and a multi-purpose Excalibur Nightstick come standard. Typical enhancements include fire suppression hardware, searchlights, and a full sensor suite. Overall, the ACPA is meant to allow non-Borg to fight at a full Borg level. What, speci what special customizations Chief Rio has ordered is still a mystery. Very good. So we begin today's session with a bit of a downpour, a typhoon in fact. Uh, typhoon Hagibis is bearing down on Japan with winds in excess of 120 uh, kilometers an hour, or about 75 miles per hour for those of you in the States. Uh, combined with torrential rain, most of the city of Tokyo is currently shut down. Only those with truly urgent and important business dare brave the elements. That leaves the streets empty of vehicle and pedestrian alike. It also means that a certain new arrival to the Shibuya complex, that's home to our edge runners, is absolutely soaked when she steps out of the elevator. So, uh, as you may notice on the overlay, we have a brand new player with us today. 
Uh, if you could introduce yourself both out of character and in character, uh, tell us a little bit about your character, and uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, Spot, if you would take it from here. Uh, hello, I am Spot. Uh, I've been I've played a bit of 2020, so when I heard about the whole cyber, uh, the Tokyo Red and Cyberpunk Red, I had to jump in on it because I love Cyberpunk, and I also play a crap ton of D and D, so our tabletop RPGs and that stuff are right up my alley. Uh, Steel, though, uh, walks in as soaking wet, but wearing a fancy leather jacket over top a what looks to be an armor-plated uh, skin-tight body weight. And standing about five foot two and very lithe and just standing there sort of like, damn it, where's the guy I'm supposed to meet? Well... Uh, as you uh, can probably see on the map here, you're standing in the apartment hallway, and there is no one here to greet you. I guess I'll just go up and knock on the first door. And that happens to be Akari's room. All right. Uh, so the door to Akari's room, whatever door number there was, has been filed off and has been replaced with 404 room not found. Uh, several radiation warning stickers have been plastered all over the front of it. That does not appear to deter anyone, much to Ikari's chagrin. Uh, uh, the door opens a creak just to so, so that you can so that she can see who it is. And then once she realizes that you're not currently pointing a gun at her door or threatening her in any way, the door will open fully. Uh, she stands. Uh, five foot six ish, five foot seven, half Japanese, half Caucasian. Her hair is dyed a purple and blue in the front portion and then pulled back into a bit of a bun in the back. It looks like she hasn't cut it in the last several months. Oh, you're, uh, you're the new girl, huh? Yes, um, are you a car? Yes, yes, I am. And she will extend a hand out to greet you. Right. Shakes it. Right. And with, uh, as she does so, there's a small jingle as a series of keys and pass from her hand to yours. Right. Your place is just across the hall. Payments due first of the month. Oh, um, right. I'm supposed, I don't have any money. I'm supposed to do a job here for I believe I was told we were. Our, I was supposed to help you set up the elevator for the place, not the phys, not not the literal elevator. The oh, uh, uh, small real. Oh yes, that's right. Good. Yes, now that some of us have gone official, our cybersecurity is a little holy. Let's say yes, yes. Fine. Um, first payment will be deferred. You don't. Have, so long as you do your job well, and we don't get hacked into oblivion the second some people find out that new cops are living here. Yeah, fine. We'll make it work. Anyways, make yourself at home. Perfect. Um. Just let me know if you need me. Yeah, and there's a as a there's a shout down the hallway as Akari just yells, "The new girl's here." And with that, she'll turn on her heels, close the door, and you hear the sound of power tools coming from her apartment. Ooh, interesting. I'll have to talk to her later about something. And I'll try and head, and I'll head him to the room here, because I was told it's right across the hall. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, the keys you get work. And when you step into your apartment, it's a fairly modest affair. Uh, you've got a segregated bathroom and a segregated bedroom. Uh, but the apartment itself just opens up into what is a living room. Uh, it has standard equipment in it, meaning it's got a couch. Uh, the kitchen has a uh, square table with four chairs around it. Thankfully, it already has a fridge. And uh, your oven appears to be functional. So you've got that going for you. Um, the one thing I would say, though, just to sort of further role play, is that part of the elevator creation process will involve everyone. So you probably want to go around, introduce yourself, maybe get everybody together kind of a thing. Yeah, I just go in to drop my things off and try and stash 
in my weapon somewhere, so just in case, hearing that they're cops apparently. Uh, alright. Then I'll head out and I, I'll, I'll, head, I'll tr knock on all the other doors first because I just disturbed Akari just a second ago, so I'll wait off on that. Okay. So would it be airbags or Shogun first if you're going down the line? I'm just I'm just walking down the hall and just knocking on each door as I walk down the wall. Okay. And so when you get to airbags door, you actually won't get a response from there because uh, he is currently not in. Ooh, okay. He, he is coming back recent. He is coming back shortly, but uh, he is elsewhere at the moment. There's like a small crashing sound in Shogun's bedroom as he gets up. Yeah, what uh, what about Enzo and uh, Xavier? What about you two? Enzo will open the door seconds before a steel knocks, having heard the previous knock. From behind, like, you can barely see past him because he's big guy. Undetermined ethnicity, a mostly shaved head and fairly large builds in an immaculate suit. Probably one of many identical suits he wears. Uh, it's, there's kind of the slight sign of cyborgism underneath the, the creases of the suit. It looks like he tries to keep it hidden. But this room looks immaculate, very impersonal, very personal effects. Just, uh, several um, guns set out in very ornate places where he's been cleaning them. Uh, meticulate bonsai tree, several things of incense. Maybe I'll answer you. Uh, Xavier will be grabbing his coat and opening the door just before uh, Steel gets a chance to knock on the door as he was going to go out and about into the city with the rain, because why not? Um, what do you... Hi, I should introduce myself. I am Sir... I am not using real names anymore. Steel. I'm Steel. Hi. Enzo. Hi. Xavier here. And I believe um, the person here next over here is waking up. He made a bit of a rack. And I also need Akari. Uh, I'm here to set up the the uh, elevator for your establishment, your cybersecurity. Not the literal elevator. A lot of people get confused between those two things. Right. Wonderful I'm... to meet you. Not my speciality. I would not have realize that well i need everyone to get together for it uh shogun eventually gets out of his uh room ah that's another one um how many of you guys are living here it varies Shogun kind of like ponders for a moment it's like eh, yeah it varies All right uh Let's get a car in. Do you have like a common room or something we can all sit down in? We do have a common room. Um, we can grab a car. He has airbags shown up. Uh, who? Uh, I will not know. Shogun says. He lives in the corner. Mel Bishop, would uh, airbags be back by this point? Uh, probably about that point is when he walks in. Yeah, he'll like come up the stairs sort of coat very obviously soaking wet so he's just come in from the rain uh <clears throat> so an older sort of very wiry looking guy with clothes that are extremely shabby but also extremely hard wearing and no immediately obvious cybertech other than sort of what looks like a piece of tech around one of the eyes and some chrome tipped fingers ah that must be him now uh i'll go knock on akari's door and then we can head there the drilling stops and akari just opens the door wide with the power drill still in her hand oh you're not wasting any time are you better sooner than later just 
small roll of her eyes. Very well. Let me just get out of this wor- working garb. I'll be there in a minute. Uh, all right. So uh, we're going to cut to the common room probably about 10 minutes later with you all assembled. And uh, Steel, I'm going to let you do a little bit of fluff and then I'll take it away from the mechanic standpoint. Okay, so the main thing of the security is you need to be worried right throughout the whole building. Judging by the sound of your tools and stuff, Akari, I'm assuming you can handle the majority of that. Um, other than uh, the next question would be, do you want the entire whole, do you want all of you on the same network? It would take a lot longer. We could make each individual room its own little thing if you want them to have extra little privates, uh, privacy there. Or we can just have one whole network and then each of the rooms for your own personal things having its own uh, password wall and level. Up to you. The second would take longer. Ikari's eyes glaze over a bit at the technical details of it. I'd prefer a little bit of privacy myself. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Privacy's nice, yes. Alright. And you're fine with doing the wiring? That's physical stuff? I can help, just not my strong suit. Xavier and I can have this place rewired in a while. I'm pretty sure that We've both already identified several areas in which we can run improvements at the same time. Indeed. We can double-team this and take care of it rather quickly. Phrasing. (laughs) All right. On my interruption there, that's where we're going to go over to the actual uh, actual mechanics of this. (laughs) All right, so as far as I know, this is the first time that uh, any streamed game has actually touched on building an elevator. Um, Feel free to correct me, but uh, I also have to be very careful here because of certain NDAs. So if I can't answer your question, know that it's I really want to, but I can't. Um, So we're going to do a little bit of creation here, and I wanted everybody to chip in because this is literally going to be your network moving forward until the full net running rules come out. Uh, Let me pull my notes on this. All right. So the first things first is we need to determine how many floors are in this elevator. Um, Now, there's a couple ways we can do this, and I'm going to let you guys decide which it is. Um, You can either have one of you, probably steal, uh, roll a 1d8 and add three, or you can take the average and just have a total of seven floors. Now, having more floors nece- isn't necessarily better or worse, but it would give you more fidelity on what each layer actually handled. Um, are we allowed to, once an elevator is built, are we allowed to make modifications to it? Or is that kind of, we have to tear it down and rebuild it completely? Um, you can definitely modify it, but it's going to take definitely a lot of time and money to do so. Money. And again, we're keeping money sort of a nebulous thing, but it, it, it would be the equivalent in 2020. Like, you can't run out and grab, like, a dragon or something. Um, it's it's something that you would have to work towards actually affording, if that makes any sense. And uh, what I should say here, if it affects your, uh, your decision any, um, the five things you see listed on the right-hand side of the screen... Um, one of the layers has to be a control node for the fire alarm and the sprinklers. Another control node on another level has to be for the elevators. Then the hellhound and manticore in red, those are black ice. They're basically defenders for the network. Um, when we get to manticore, I can talk more about that. Uh, hellhound is in the jumpstart though. Um, and if you need to look that up, feel free. Um, passwords are basically gate gateways into the network. A enemy netrunner cannot go past a password unless they break it. So the higher DV of a password you do, the better. But at the same time, there's a, an associated cost with effort and time. Um, and then if we need to get into it, uh, there's file where you can actually literally put files on your network if you were so inclined. 
But yeah, let's uh, let's focus on this first thing here. Would you guys rather roll the d8 or would you like to simply take the average? I mean, average would get us what was it? Seven, eight, seven, seven. floors. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty decent elevator size by my, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. Seven would work fine. Seven's fine with me. Okay, so seven it shall be. All right, so the first things first is now that we have a floor uh, set up is the first two floors. Uh, actually, no, it's just the first floor. Uh, the very first floor uh, has to be, you know, just a floor. But moving deeper into the network, you guys can sort of splinter out. If you want to imagine like a, a tree branch uh, where you can have offshoots of the tree branch. So, for example, if you wanted to, say, split into two, starting at floor two, or split into three, or maybe, like, go three layers in, then splinter, you know, that's this is sort of where it gets complicated, but... So we're you know, doing a flow chart. You're doing a flow chart, basically, yeah. Do all this like, still count as one whole floor? Yes. So, for example, uh, if you had floor two here and floor two here, that would be three floors. Oh, okay. they, that that way we're not like mired down in how many you know floors there are um because of reasons I can't go into okay so it all adds up to the same total correct but yeah uh how would you guys like to lay out your network would you like it to be flat would you like it to be uh splintering <laughs> I think flat would work well for us now because the only reason I'd see the, a reason for us to splinter would be for everyone's individual rooms, in which case we wouldn't have enough floors for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, let's start flat because as a player, I've never done this, so let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. All right. So let me range this here. Four, five, and seven. All right. So uh, the first floor, uh, it can only have a password on it. Now, you could put a control node here if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah. So the way the password is going to work is, again, we could have steel roll for it, um, or you could take the average value of seven. For the password is DV. Yes, the password's DV. I would love to roll for that, because seven sounds awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go for it. Let's roll. Okay. Can I, can I spend luck on this? You can indeed, but what I would say is that the cap is an 11. Oh. It's just an interface check, right? Correct. And if you're looking for which button to push, it's on actually the second page of the character sheet is where you can actually push the buttons. I'll, I'll spend two luck. Okay. Ooh, I rolled critical a one failure. Course. Wow. Oh. That's one total. Ooh, all right. Oh. So yeah, three total. It's a three total. <laughs> I rolled a one. So how would you like to describe uh, Steele's first attempt at making the password? Because I think for the moment, I find it funny that your DV password's going to be a three. <laughs> So, since I just came in from the pouring rain, uh, Steel uh, forgot about when she goes to uh, plug in her cable, she forgot that her hair is still soaking wet and it kind of fries her cable for a bit and messes. And all of you would see this. Our password is password, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So, no hard, I'd quickly find a towel and uh, use it to further insulate your hair against all the, you know, however that works. All mm -hmm. the shockiness? Yes, the I, shockiness. Uh, I'm just, um, and then I start muttering about, why do people always seem to lie on their resumes? <laughs> I forgot to dry off. I knew I was forgetting something. Mm. <laughs> we all make mistakes, you know. This has nothing to do with shooting people in the face, so I am we had out of my depth, and what they're doing seems very fine. 
All right. So floor two, what would you guys like to put here? Uh, I'd say the elevators. No, uh, one of the black ices first. Okay. So when it comes to a hellhound, uh, if you could roll me, let's have someone else roll. Let's uh, let's have Xavier roll this one. Okay. Uh, Xavier, roll me a uh, a D three, please. I assume I know what it is because I have one. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know what it is. All right, so you only can deploy one hellhound in this network. That's all fine, the cause... ones are coming out to play. Well, that's mm -hmm. fine because the, the hellhound takes up its own floor, right? You can put it on the same as a control node, but you can't put a password on the same level as a hellhound. Or at least that's okay. the way I'm going to roll with it. Can I say we can put the hellhound on floor two with the elevators? Sure. Okay. All right. So hellhound will go here. Elevators will go here. All right. Uh, what would you like on floor three? Another password, if we can, because that first one is bad. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, go ahead and roll me another interface. I would recommend not rolling a one. <laughs> well, I don't have any control over that. I'll spend another two luck because I have ten luck total. Might as well use it. Right. Oh. So, 12. Ten. 12. Oh. So, uh, as I said, the cap is 11. However, I am going to offer you a compromise. I will allow the DV to be a 12. However, you will have to put a file containing the password on either floor 1 or floor 2. I'm fine with it being 11. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Up next, we have floor four. What would you like to put here? Hmm. I say the other control node. Yeah, probably a good idea. Okay. What, what examples of files would we be using? What files would be? So would be files using? would be anything like, uh, let's use Bitcoin for an, exa an example. Like if you had a virtual wallet, the data on that would be a file. Um, if you had, say, a diary of some sort that you wanted on the network for some reason, that would be a file. Um, something I neglected to mention is that the two control nodes, they don't have to be only the two. If you wanted to, you guys could also wire up other things. Uh, for example, you could wire up the lights of the place. You could wire up uh, door locks to control nodes. It's really what your imagination sort of speaks to you uh, about. Yeah, I was thinking um, something along the lines of like a master, like a lockdown protocol kind okay. of thing. I feel like that should be like on four seven or six. Yeah, seven. that's fair. Maybe something control all the stereos. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, I was actually thinking of, like, some sort of alarm or PDA system would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Remind me, where are our, where are our doors automatic or, like, manual? Has it made the pull, like, the handle and open the door? Or is it, like... At the moment, they are manual, but you can make them... Like, that's kind of what this is deciding, is are you guys okay. going further into the future technology-wise? Um, I have an idea, if you don't mind hearing me out. By all means. So... So Shogun would present the idea where we have, like, exits and, like, kind of like the choke points of the building have an automatic lockdown, so kind of like airlocks, I guess, to lock people in if they are trying to attack. Okay. Shogun would recommend that. Works for me. Yeah, sounds yeah. good to hear. Okay. That'd be a file and... Game mechanics, or uh, I would make that a control node. Uh, I will say the okay. control node will be doors. So it's like a okay. full lockdown or choke point lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, choke point lockdown. Yeah, everything's locked down, but the one set of like stairways. Yeah, yeah. and then like the easiest way for us to escape, and then like ways we can choke point the enemy. And... Okay, so I'll change that to full lockdown, and this to partial lockdown. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you'd have it set up so that uh, the doors open one way. So if you're coming from, like, 
Oh, I see. Yeah, so bottom, if you're coming you from like from the left, and if you're going down, you can only go from the right. Yeah, so that, that makes like, sense. Both points, yeah. but also gives us a, a callback. Okay. Uh huh. Now, I, I like to think that anyone who comes in to hack the system is going to think that the weak password on the f first floor was deliberate so that they, like, get trapped by the hellhound before they hit the real security. Mm -hmm. Yes. Much. Fully intended. There we go. Ah, this Fully guy is intended, a genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to put the partial lockdown on floor three or later? Uh, Later could work. I'm actually fine either way where it is, personally. Yeah, I'd say... So floor five or six would work and then mm. put the fire alarms and sprinklers on floor four. okay so let's go to floor four uh do you want to put the fire alarm there i think is what i just heard yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay. or how about the partial lockdown on five and then the fire alarms on six mm. i don't think anyone can get to do much with like a fire alarm i was thinking more like if they set off the sprinklers there's a lot of electrical equipment especially in a car he's yeah, it's mostly mechanical. It'll mostly be fine. Okay. But um, there is a file that I'd like to have placed on, I think, floor four would make the most sense. Okay, what is this file? Be, um, it would be uh, Ikari's, um, from, like, just whatever uh, whatever f uh, files are related to Ikari's family history. Okay. She wants to access them while you know, at work so that she can do stuff but not keep it on the Metropolitan Police Network. Okay. Oh, wait, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Uh, can I do something similar to that? Sure, uh, what okay. would you like to do? Yeah, the current list of Yakuza members, or low-ranking Yakuza members. Current ranking Yakuza. And where would you like to put that? Floor five, can we fit in there, or six? I mean, if you really wanted to, you could throw it in floor four uh, or lower. Um, you just, you know, wherever you want to throw it, really. I'll put it in four. Um, I feel like I don't, I, I'd rather have them deal with the hellhound and the password before they get to something that crude. Okay. Now, put in, um, like, a gag file? Um, I have a suggestion, actually. Let's. Uh, real quick, let's, can... uh, let's have uh, Scotty chip in, because I think Scotty had something. Can we put in, like, a gag file? Like, put in a file of Baby Shark? Yeah, if you really wanted <laughs> to, that, yeah. if you really wanted to, you could literally put Baby Shark on this network, and the net runner that hacks it might not feel great about themselves. Yeah, put that on floor three. It floor three, like a black ice program, really. Yeah, can we put? Let's put the Baby Shark on floor three. Can we put it before the password on floor three? Yes, you can indeed. <laughs> can we put Baby Shark like in the same format as Manticore and Hellhound instead of file? <laughs> Yeah, we can uh, we can certainly color it red. Yeah, we'll have so the baby shark. Yeah, so they see it and think, oh god, it's a black ice, and then no, it's just a harmless image, but it gives them a spook. Oh no no no! If you don't know what baby shark is, we're going to tell you after the session because my god, is it sanity loss inducing? Baby, oh, I'm scared. Baby, this revenge. baby, 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 baby. Don't you start singing it, please, for the love of all that is holy. <laughs> nope. I'll say, can we move the partial lockdown to six? The okay. files, the uh, Makari and Shogun's files, the five, mm -hmm. and then put them. And then, can we put the Manticore? Can I customize the Manticore to look like an actual baby shark on floor? <laughs> <laughs> I like it, um, but this is another roll. So, someone, uh, you know what? Let's have uh, Jester. Why don't we have Enzo roll this one? Roll me a roll me a D three, and that's how many Manticores you can put on the network. Oh, right, I forgot we could get more if the dice are in our favor. Oh, geez. There's no custom, there's no D3s. Uh... You can do a. Slash yeah, I think roll. you got to do the slash roll command, unfortunately. Space and then one. Yeah, yeah there All right, so you can put two Manticores on this network. Now, Manticore is something I've brought over from 2020. Um, it is a, as you can probably guess by the name, it is a hybrid program. Um, it can both deal damage to a program, which is important for steel, or it can do damage directly to an enemy netrunner. Um, for those of you that aren't savvy with netrunning rules, a hellhound only damages the netrunner. Hmm. Okay. So, I didn't know that. Sorry. So, can we swap out the hellhound on floor two with a manticore then since we have two you certainly may and then move the 
and then move the the Akari and Shogun's files to floor five, and put the other, and put the Hellhound on uh, on floor. Okay, if everybody's cool with that, we will make it so. Sure, that's fine. Okay, put that like that. All right. All of our black eyes are uh, custom designed to look like they all baby. All baby sharks. I love it. All right. Uh, you have one more manticore to throw on this network, and then I think we're done. When your security system is being set up pro bono, you don't get to complain about the desktop. Oh. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that it should probably be up near the top, I would think, where, you know, the partial lockdown could be kicked off. You put the Manticore on the partial lockdown node? Yeah, I think that would make the most sense. Right. That's fine with me, since I don't think anyone cares about Yakuza to be honest, at least in my case. And the, do the files on floor five take up the slot or can we put something else there too? If you wanted to, you could put something else there. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm, I might, I'm trying to think of if I can get, if I'm trying to think of like if I can make my own little weird. Can I install so basically, it would basically be some type of, it would basically be a network-wide virus, but since it's actually building, it wouldn't be a virus. It's, I want to know if I can make something that would, after they get past floor three, something that would alert me of any active netrunner in the system, or like send some sort of notification to my agents. I have to be careful here. Yes, we can set up an alarm. And I think that technically that means it has to be a file. Perfect. So we'll say alarm to steal. It almost feels like a control node more than a file. Uh, you know what? There is an argument for a control node. Uh, I would say the difference between a control node and a file is the control node you just access and you, you're good to go. A file, they if an enemy netrunner came in, they would have to not only ID the program, but they could also, I suppose, copy it to their cyber deck if they wanted to. So control node is just literally a fire and forget. Um, a file, there's some extra steps. So it could be whatever one, whichever one you guys prefer, really. I feel like, yeah, a control node, I think, would make more sense because like, a file can be taken. Okay. And we'll make it a control node. And can if and then can it move the uh fire and fire alarm and sprinklers to floor five to make room for the alarm on floor. Okay. I mean the I'm just spacing it out. If you want to throw it on floor three, it's not a big deal. Okay. I just gotta it. move it down a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Alright. I, I I like how this looks. All right, and that is the network you guys create working together, and we're back into regular role play. All right. So uh, Airbags is just sitting there in the chair, going, "I understand none of this." You don't need to. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> and I suppose at the the very bottom floor, floor seven, we also have all our like personal log diary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ikari's just going to go right now. That looks good. I suppose we can call that a day. How long will it take to implement? Um, it shouldn't be too long. The the bulk, I'm pretty much done. The longest part would just be Ikari and you guys setting up the physical aspect of it, wiring into elevators and all that. Most of the, I'm assuming most of the building's infrastructure is completed, so it would really just be plugging some things in the other thing. Yep, it's a plug-and-play, if you will. 
That's a shame. I ha I had managed to bring home a new diamond-tipped saw I wanted to try out on some of these walls. Good thing about working with my new employer is I can bring some of their tools home with me. I don't feel that I'm having to steal them from lesser privileged gangs. And uh, speaking of uh, your new employers, uh, Akari, Xavier, and Enzo, your agents all beep. Well, speak of the devil. I pull mine out and answer. Okay. Uh, you don't actually like have to put it to your your uh, your head or anything. It's just a text message. Uh, Chief Kabia Ryu uh, or Rio has asked you all to report to uh, the TMPD headquarters at your earliest convenience. Uh, she apologizes for the fact that you will have to go outside in the typhoon, but it is rather urgent that she uh, meet with you within the day. I just look at um, the other two. Well, I think we're going to go get wet. Airbags, can we bother you for a, a ride? No worries. Oh, thank God you have a car. Yeah, uh, fair warning, though. You probably want to take a raincoat anyway. The rear windows don't have glass on them. <laughs> nice. I bring my... Uh... Weatherproof ar light armor jack for this. Okay. I do as well. See old gestures to what she's wearing. This is literally all I have. I pull Don't in worry. some longer leather gloves. Being oiled. Nothing's worse than having cyber parts run. True. I like to steal. We'll take care of you. Thank you. And I just grab a normal rain jacket. Alrighty. So, uh, with everybody going along, uh, we're going to cut ahead a little bit. Uh, well, not, not too far ahead, because there is a few roles I want to take care of. So, airbags, you know, it is sort of uh, very gusty out there, very windy and rainy. Uh, I would like you to roll me a driving, please. Yeah, because uh, driving driving through a typhoon, not generally the best idea. Mm -hmm. And I would say because it is a typhoon, you will take a minus five to this roll. Let's see, where is my driving skill? There we go. So that is a 15. It's, very, it's pretty much all you need. So airbags, you know, your vehicle is being buffeted by the storm. Uh, but the benefit is, is that, as I said at the beginning... Um, there's barely anyone out here at all, and those vehicles you do see are emergency vehicles responding to, you know, things going on in Shibuya or in the greater Tokyo area. So it's not a big deal that, you know, you suddenly get blown into the other lane or things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's probably, it's like a section of like raised highway where he just like turns at 20 degrees to the left and just slides along just to counteract the wind tokyo drifting i love it <laughs> literally mm -hmm. uh, so uh you know you're driving along i'd say you're about 10 minutes out uh from the uh, tmpd headquarters when i would like everyone to roll me a perception please just a regular perception okay an 11 a 20 a 12 a 21 and 11. All right, so looks like Shogun, Xavier, uh, Airbags, Enzo. So pretty much everybody but uh, Steel and Akari. All right, so those of you that notice this, um, you're sort of looking out of the windows of the car, and you're noticing that there is an overturned vehicle up ahead. Um, it appears to be a, a van that is actually quite similar to the one that Airbags is sort of shuttling you around in at the moment. And you are seeing that there are two people trying to flag you down. Hmm. <clears throat> Unless anyone, like, stops them, I don't think uh, Airbags is going to respond, because, you know, he's a nomad. He knows what an ambush looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll instantly take out my uh, heavy pistol, like, out of a holster. But yeah, basically he's just going to keep driving on, just circling around it. Okay. 
So, uh, you all uh, drive past. Would you say you're keeping speed, speeding up? Just keeping speed, like we're ignoring them. Okay, you ignore them. And uh, you sort of see in your rear view mirror that, you know, one of them that was going, ah, and then they just sort of hold up their hands like, why, why? And then they start trying <laughs> to fly down the next, uh, next sort of people. But yeah, uh, with that, you all arrive at the TMPD headquarters, park, and head into the building. Uh, those of you with IDs, it's very easy. You just flash your ID and uh, uh, you guess. Central ally dodged. Yep. And uh, you are able to get inside. Um, you are directed, all of you, to an office that looks something a little bit like this. Uh, it is a open area with uh, three rows of desks. Uh, there are three uh, terminals on either side of the row. So there's a grand total of, we can math today, six rows of computers and equipment. Um, waiting for you is uh, the chief herself. She is positioned at the front. And uh, there are several faces here that you do not recognize. Well, you do recognize one, or at least some of you do anyway. You're pretty sure that that uh, purple-haired woman with the, the aviator sunglasses is a certain idol you used to work with. Huh. I'm just going to raise an eyebrow, not say anything. Plop down and put my shoes on, my wet shoes on the desk. Okay. I'll have you on the page in a second. Here we go. And Shogun, shrink him down. Oh, man. All right. So uh, as you all plop in, uh, Akari, you're up on the, your feet are up on the desk. Uh, what about Enzo and Xavier? I'll stand at attention. Okay. I'm going to hang up my coat first and then walk in. All right. For him walk. And, and all the non-police body members are sort of standing awkwardly off to the side. Mm -hmm. We'll say for a for sake of argument, there's chairs you guys can wait in. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, once you all make yourselves at home, uh, Chief uh, Rio stands up and says, Ah, well, you got here faster than I expected. Uh, tell me, was, uh, was that uh, broken down vehicle still there a few minutes ago that uh, you guys passed? Sorry, what vehicle? Uh, there was a yeah, well, report the, of... The overturned SUV? Yeah, that was still there. Ah, well, that means uh, Department 3 hasn't gotten to that yet. Mm. Well, that's a shame. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I just wanted to uh, test both your readiness and make sure that in an emergency you could respond. So well done there. You've passed test number one. Um, but this is also a good opportunity for you all to meet each other. Uh, so she stands and motions over at a... Uh, sort of a stylized red-haired woman uh, with a scar across her nose uh, motions at her first and says, uh, this is Yasui Ira. Uh, she is our tech on the team. Well, one of them anyway. And uh, Yasui sort of just nods at each of you in turn. Uh, and then Chief goes over to Kuri Asa and says, this is the formal idol, idol Kuri Asa. I'm sure some of you may know her already. And Kure Chan just sort of smiles and says, hi. And then the chief points at a very Borg looking, very Chrome looking gentleman and says, this is Petrovic. And Petrovic says, da, my name is Petrovic. Do not wear it out. I only have the one name. It and looks like you've worn out pretty much the rest of you. Oh, it's funny. I like new person. What, what, what is your name? Ikari. Ah, uh, Kari, and uh, you, big man, what is your name? Enzo. Enzo, and uh, you, slightly so smaller man, what, what, what is your name? Xavier. Ah, uh, very, very good. Well, uh, suffice to say, yes, I have been blown up more times than I care to count. Is what happens when you work on bomb team and not good at job. Out of curiosity, with those legs, what is your top running speed? Uh, is probably a neighborhood of, well, he looks over at the chief. The chief just sort of laughs and says, uh, needless to say, he can catch the best cyber psycho out there. So in other words, if he's bad at his job, there's no chance of us outrunning him. Right, we're doomed. 
<laughs> you know, I never thought of it that way. And Chief kind of looks critically over at Petrovic. You're not going to go, uh, you know, psycho on us, are you? And Petrovic sort of waves his hand and says, no, 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 it was, it was not in my, my, my wheelhouse. No, I go through regular therapy even though I probably not need it. And the Chief just sort of shrugs and says, well, there you go. Yeah, Steel has been quiet and kind of nervous looking, like hearing the talk about tech and cyber. Actually, if you actually if you lose limbs and stuff uh, through causes and actually get uh, replacements that are needed to replace body parts that are no longer there, there's no chance of cyber psychosis is really will not reduce your... Sorry, I spoke out of turn. No, oh, and actually, uh, Yasui, uh, who is closest to you, kind of turns and smells uh, very bluntly. She's not on the team, but she speaks the truth. She seems to be very knowledgeable. Uh, tell me, you three to Akari, Enzo, and Xavier. Are these the uh, independent consultants you uh, are bringing on as well? Indeed they are. Well, yes, my name is Steele. Uh, they just um, hired me and took me in to help me uh, have have me uh, help build them their own uh, elevator and security where they're staying. Mm, well, uh, we could always use another net runner. I'm Abex. I do the driving. He's our chauffeur. Yes. Chauffeur, driver, same difference. I'm Shogun, and I uh, I like to shoot things, and I like to get connections, and I do like the old air finger gun. Air finger guns, I love it. And uh, Chief Rio actually just sort of laughs and says, well, if you want connections, this is the place for it. Uh, but uh, I was remiss earlier. I forgot to tell you one very important thing. Uh, even though this is a test, and she looks very pointedly at the irritated Akari, Though this is a test, this was a test. Uh, there is good news. Uh, our shipment from Arasaka came in a few days ago. If you want a first crack at the Type Seventeen armor, go for it. I my my feet are right off the table, and I'm standing upright immediately. I would be very interested in seeing where this is. Pardon my earlier disrespect, ma'am. <laughs> I like that change. Uh, don't feel you have to uh, be formal with me all the time. As long as we're not on the job, just treat me like a normal person. I don't really like standing on ceremony unless it's important. I will stand on any ceremony necessary to get inside one of those uh, armor jacks. And Curry Chan says, phrasing. But yes, uh, Chief kind of motions at the uh, wall behind her with a hand and the screen actually changes with the wave of the hand and you see sort of a technical loadout display of the uh, type 17 armor and uh, she turns to Yasui and says Yasui if you would do the honors and uh, Yasui stands up and starts motioning at the graphic as it highlights certain parts and she says well uh, the type 17k guardian assisted combat personal armor uh, it's pretty standard when it comes to ACPAs. Uh, it's got armor in all locations. It boosts your reflexes. Uh, it enhances your melee attacks and weaponry. It does come standard with a shock baton. Uh, it, of course, increases your lifting and carrying capacity. But uh, the real ticket here is this here. And uh, if you will imagine... Um, sort of like an Iron Man 2, uh, I forget the actual name of the suit, but it's the silver Iron Man with the sort of like shoulder mounted gun. Um, there's something like that here, except that it is instead looking like a Tesla coil or some form of energy discharging unit. And uh, Yasui continues on to says, this is a Meta Armsun Photon Assault Cannon. Uh, for those of you that have no idea what I'm saying, it is basically a laser weapon that has four charges before it will run out. And the more charges you pump into it when you fire, the more damage and penetrating ability it has. I heard that there was that they were doing stuff with laser tech just before the fall. I'm very pleased and that this stuff is being picked up again. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Hmm. Well, uh, and Yasui looks over at the chief and the chief nods and she, uh, Yasui says, well, the good news is that this is the prototype weapon. Uh, if all goes well, uh, we are actually getting a whole slew of microwave weaponry of uh, other laser weapons, you know, anti-Borg type weapons. I'm sorry, would you, can I, I know it's prototype and all that, would you allow me to download a copy of the specs? Yeah, so he looks at the chief, and the chief kind of studies you, Steel. 
Uh, Steel, do you have persuasion? Uh, yes. All right, go ahead and roll me a persuasion, please. A 14. Uh, the chief sort of thinks about it for a moment and says, I'll make you a deal. And she points at airbags. If uh, you will allow us to install a tracker on this gentleman's vehicle, just, you know, for safekeeping in case you guys get stuck in a compromising scenario, I will give you a copy of the schematics. Oh, that's not up to me. Out of character, I'm going to have to ruin this. (laughs) That's not up to me. That's up to airbags. Yeah, uh, so airbags will sort of like look at Steel, look at the chief and just like shake his head and go, sorry, no deal. Mm. Shame. Well, you'll break eventually. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it, he'll sort of uh, le- lean over and say to Steele, sorry, I'll, I'll explain later. Ask me when we get back to the flat. Right. Well, you'll break eventually, says the chief. Uh, one way or another, I'll get you driving a uh, approved vehicle, especially if you're going to be ferrying these three around, motion get a car, Enzo and Xavier. Actually, that doesn't sound too bad, considering the back windows are still broken on his. Yeah, well, th- it's not that they're broken, it's that they've been replaced with armored slats. It still lets in the rain. Yes, it does. But it doesn't let in bullets, which is kind of handy. Well, with that said, uh, the training room is uh, one floor down. The There should be about two suits available for play. Just, uh, you know, don't go blowing holes in my wall, because... Uh, I have to report to someone for that, and it's not fun paperwork. Don't make Kari you... does her best not to uh, run like a like a fangirl meeting her rocker gal idol, mm-hmm. to, and heads down to where the uh, goods are being kept. Okay. Same for steel. <laughs> okay, and, and airbags will just sort of like nod and give a cherry salute to Kuri as they head out. Okay, I wave. All right, is anyone staying before I move maps? Enzo is um, sighing, giving a very, you know, rolling his eyes so hard, there's an audible sound, and then following Akari. Nice. <laughs> I would like to ask him one thing oh, before... Go ahead. Oh, never mind. No, you're fine, I go just ahead. Wanna, like... You know what, never mind, I don't want to ask him that question, it's not a good question. Okay, fair enough. And yeah, sure enough, uh, you go one floor down, and there's a big open area of a training room. And uh, there are two sets of the powered armor that are waiting in the far corner. And it seems like uh, it is very Iron Man-esque, where you sort of have to either uh, step into the suit and then it reforms around you. Uh, or you could do sort of a suitcase suit where you you know put the boots down and then it forms up. Uh, whichever one you would like to attribute in your headcanon. Um, the good news though, is that the range is completely open at the moment. You guys are the only ones here, so you can get as much testing done of anything you'd like while you're here. Do the suits, I want to see, I want to figure out immediately if the suits have their own, like, internal programming to help run them with the user or not. Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, do you have tech? I have basic tech. You have basic tech. Um, I would say you could ask the question, and then Akari and Xavier could maybe find out. I have cultural familiarity for cyber tech. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Uh, it's not probably very good, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking to get figured out? So you're just, are you asking the question? I was wondering if the suits have an internal program to help the user run them, or if they're needed to... If you need the jack into the suit itself, does it link up with the user at all? It does all look very high-tech. It does, I, doesn't it? I think there's one good way to find out, and I step into the one suit. All right. And as you step into it, uh, the armor begins clamping down and forming across your skin and your, your, uh, your body as it uh, very tightly clings to you. And as the helmet sort of comes down over your face and seals with a uh, a small audible hiss. A voice, only audible to you, Xavier, says, Hello, my name is Sheila, and I am your personal assistant for this power armor. 
I just say out loud, it has an AI. That is I... not quite correct. I am not an artificial intelligence. I am merely a virtual intelligence. All right, I... then. Uh, Sheila, what all can you tell me about this suit? Well, the Mark II Type 17K suit is equipped with and goes over again pretty much everything that you guys got upstairs uh, with two additions uh, Sheila says in addition to the assault cannon there is also a built in winch and grapple system as well as a full suite of tools for electrical work and fire suppression so we can be fire and rescue as well as what you're saying that is correct can I make a can I make a scanner check to see if there's any word the jack into the suit? Um, I would say a perception here could apply. <clears throat> As she's doing that, I basically give uh, Xavier nope. fully oof, fully clad form and up and down, let out a small whistle and just look to Enzo and say, "I'm sorry, Enzo, you are no longer the sexiest dressed man in this team." Why? Thank you. I don't go for sexy. I go for um, hot couture. Mm. Well, if I could get this suit home with me, then I'll have a field day with its virtual intelligence. I'm telling you. I oh. want Ikari. I'm assuming you want to. I'm assuming you want the can. I want the goodies inside the can. Yes, alas, the goodies inside the can are probably property of the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, and thus. Only us who are actually, you know, registered members of the force get access to it. Uh, if you can, you need to get me a copy of this of its software, please. I'll smirk and say, no promises, sweetie, but I'll see what I can do. And Steel is still trying to is still just looking over the suit that uh is not currently occupied, trying to look for the point. But yeah, I rolled a crit fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that even with your crit failure, um, you still rolled an eight, which would be enough to realize that it is indeed a plug into uh, existing plugs on a body, whether it's in the head, back of the neck, uh, you know, the standard array of where plugs are in the cyberpunk universe. I think there's actually a, a, a term uh, that I'm forgetting. Um, there's like a term for each style of plug. Um, like where the head one has one, the neck one has one. I'll look it up while you guys role play because that's gonna bother me. I found the spot. Um, Ikari, as you are the official member here, do I have your cordial permission to fiddle with its insides? I look around, making sure that none of the other technicians are around, and then I just pat you on the back and just sort of push you into the suit. I will happily go in and jack in to the suit. Okay. So I would like you to roll me an interface, please. Mega Man NT Warrior title theme plays. <laughs> okay. A 15. And I have rolled an 11. So immediately when you jack in, uh, it's a good thing you were somewhat aware. Because immediately... Uh, a hellhound lashes out at you. Uh, and we're going to go into a little bit of uh, structured combat here. Um, it's not going to be anything too major. But it is In going to be enough. This should have been expected. Yep. Yeah, you're right. All right. Uh, let's see. I just need a quick token. Uh, we'll just use the drone token. Because I don't have proper clearance. Yep. So uh, we'll make this the hellhound. Give it a name. I actually didn't think you guys would uh, fall for it, but you did, which I love. <laughs> All right. Listen, you show a Netrunner a place to stick their induction port in suit. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, they just, you give a Netrunner an induction port, and they just want to start interfacing with everything. Mm -hmm. Phrasing. Exactly. No. Intended. Yeah, yeah phrasing was phrasing. intended. All oh, right. Yeah. So the way this is going to work is the Hellhound is going to get only one attack before it is Steel's turn. 
Now, when it comes to Steel's turn, it's not just Steel's, it's all of yours. So if you want to try and do something, um, you certainly can. But for the moment, the rest of you just know that Steel just was pushed into the suit and the suit activated. Um, so Steel, I need you to roll me a uh, interface, please. And this is going to be, uh, let's see, the Hellhound is a plus eight. All right, so the Hellhound, uh, lucky for you, is unable to get its virtual jaws around you. And it is now Steel's turn and the rest of your guys' turn to act. Bit of an issue. Uh, give me a second. And I'll use my first of three net actions to pathfind. Okay. Well, the, uh, the good news here is that it's literally one level. And it's just a Hellhound on this level. Uh, that's all? Mm-hmm. Uh, just for the hell of it, in case my pathfind didn't spot it, I'll try and slide down to a lower level if there is. Okay, you attempt to slide, and uh, wow. let's see what you get. 16. Uh, perception for a hellhound is actually rather decent. Hellhound comes with you, and yes, you do slide to an unseen floor two. Uh, there is a very heavy password on this floor, though. It's so tempting to stay. I will use my third net action to activate a flak program, which will block all damage from the next. Okay. So the rest of you, uh, you have heard Steel say, uh, just a moment, I've encountered an issue. Uh, what are the rest of you doing as this is all going on? Um, the car feels very watching. stupid. <laughs> Sorry, I, I interrupted. No, that's a yeah. Mickey badge. Ah. Airbags are sort of like looking, looking between everyone, going, uh, "Is she okay?" Shogun shrugs. I'm going to ask Sheila, uh, "What is happening in the other suit?" The other suit has been taken over by a non-approved actor. Can we designate an approved actor as a friendly? Unfortunately, your clearance, Xavier, is not high enough to designate a new query as a authorized user. Only Chief Rio has clearance. Makes sense. I just yell out to the guys, I can't do anything from this suit. Um, now, I know enough to know that forcibly unplugging a net runner while in the middle of a net is not a good option, correct? Correct. All right. But it is an option. Um, I would say that much. Okay. Can I enter? Um, how deep in the coma or how deep into the, like, can I interact with the runner while they're jacked in? Yes. Um, you can, they can still say things in quote unquote meat space and hear in meat space. But if you wanted to see the virtual world that they're seeing, you also have to jack in. Okay, probably not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to say, I can yank you out if need, or I can disconnect you if you need be. Uh, Steel, just let me know. Please don't, that'll hurt. I'm fine. Okay, all right. And I'll just keep an eye on things. All right, so we're going to roll around to round number two. The Hellhound is going to come at you once again. All right, number to beat here is an 11. Let's make an interface. Mm-hmm. A 14, you are able to continually evade the virtual Hellhound as its fiery jaws clamp down on virtual nothingness. And it is now Steel's turn again, and then we'll handle everybody else. I will use a net action to attempt a backdoor. Okay. Pass the password. 13. 13 is not enough, yeah, unfortunately. So. Can I, am I able to try again? Um, I would say you can, yes, but again, it uses up your net actions. Yeah, I will. I'll spend one luck and try again. Okay. 
I don't know, 11. Yeah, so even again, yeah, with an 11, you're not getting anywhere with the uh, the password, unfortunately. Yeah. Damn it. I think you have, what, one net action remaining? I have one more, yeah. I don't want to damage their system. Can I interface to the other suit from the suit that I'm in? You can, but we need to know what her last net action is first. I'm just going to, if I may, I will just try again. Okay. I'm going to say at this point that uh, predictive algorithms in the uh, the network are going to raise the DV just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little <laughs> bit. This will be my last attempt, and next turn I'll just leave if it doesn't work. Yeah, no. Okay. So yeah, you try again, and unfortunately nothing. Uh, but Xavier, you did have an idea. Yeah, let's see if... Uh, I'll ask Sheila. Can I... Uh, can we interface into the other suit? We can, yes. However, it would expose you to the security system. That's fine. It sounds like she needs a system. Very good. Initiating wireless link up. And uh, Xavier, from the helmet of your suit, um, almost augmented reality comes across your vision. And before, where maybe steel was like standing rigid, you see a virtual representation of them uh, literally dodging and weaving out of the way of a flaming wolf. Uh, that is made out of a holographic red and orange. And uh, you have no idea what this is. Uh, well, you might, um, but you're not a net runner, so you don't know immediately, like, yeah, that's a hellhound. You just know that it's a bad thing. And that's what you're seeing. And I am going to say that you get one net action around. Um, so if you're not familiar with what you can do as a net action, um, it is on page three. 32 of the Jumpstart rulebook. All right. Give me just a moment to get there. Now, because you don't uh, traditionally have an interface level, what I'm going to say is that while you are in the suit, you are counted as having an interface level of one. So that means that uh, any net action you do will be a D10 plus a one. Alrighty. My stuff is taking forever to load. I apologize. No, you're fine. While he's looking that up, uh, what are the rest of you doing? There's not much sure. Not much I can do aside from yanking her out, which uh, not a guys, good option. What, what's what's going on? Is, Is there anything fine? we can do to assist? Just give me a second. I'm fine. Can you we like, sound fine? Upload I don't, like upload like a thing of guns to them or something. Yeah, is that like can we do that like Matrix? Like just do some hacking and all of a sudden there's a roll of guns for her to choose something from. Out of character. I'd allow it if one of you was a net runner, but unfortunately, you kind of sabotage your own only net runner, which is why yeah. this is funny. <laughs> uh, next time, I won't be. Next time, I will follow rules and regulations to the letter. To the letter, apparently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, can I do like a zap against the hell hellhound? You certainly may. Let's do that. <laughs> So it's 1d10 plus 1. Correct. Oh, crap. I forgot Flack doesn't block hellhounds. Nope. It. I was waiting for you to see if you were going to notice. I was like, eh. All right, so Scotty, you've rolled another 10. So go ahead and roll me another d10 because we do explode once. All right, a grand total of 17. Nice. Which is enough to beat the Hellhound's uh, defense. So go ahead and roll me, I believe it is 1d6 uh, as a zap. All right, you do a grand total of two damage. Uh, so uh, narratively what happens, Xavier, you move over and a wire shoots out of the palm of your hand uh, of the suit and jacks into a port on a steel suit. And of course, all that virtual overlay stuff happens 
And then you using your free hand, you do sort of a finger gun like chew and like a little lightning bolt shoots out and hits the hellhound. And the hellhound is struck. Uh, however, uh, something you're not going to like is that now the hellhound's focused on you, Xavier. And we come around to top of round three. So, Xavier, I need you to roll me a d10 plus one again. And the number to beat here is... Uh, you're going to need to roll... Let me see if it's even possible. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's mathematically possible for you to beat that. So, Xavier, uh, you are going to immediately take... 3d6... You're going to take an immediate 10 damage that is unaffected by armor or anything of the sort as the Hellhound's virtual claws uh, leave a burning, psychosomatic, stinging sensation that sort of shoots up your arm from where you're connected and into your brain. It hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah, you'll just hear me writhing in pain. And at this point, uh, I'm going to open the floor before Steeler Xavier goes. I'm going to open the floor to Airbag, Shogun, Enzo, and Akari. You have just heard that happen. Should we pull her out? I'm fine. He's distracting the Hellhound. The what? That hurt. The Hellhound? One of those black ice things that she was talking about putting into our elevator. Oh, right. I don't think they're very friendly when you're not authorized. Yeah. Uh, so do we pull her out or? Don't pull me out. I'm actually okay. A little, I, I, I'm a bit I, I understand none of this net net running rubbish. I will trust that you are not about to die. I'm more concerned about uh, Scotty uh, or uh, Zave, Xavier at the moment. Uh, yeah, because he just let out the yelp of pain and is currently writhing in his suit. Um, is the suit, there. yeah, is the suit fully armed? Yes. Or fully, and is his suit fully, like, is he fully encased in it? There's no eject button? There is no visible eject button, no. Oh, goody. Okay, well, uh, basically I'm going to yell at, Zav at Xavier, we can't get you out of there, um, you're fully encased in that thing. Uh, can I make a perception check to see if there is a way? You certainly may. Or Okay. 14. Uh, you do a quick circle of the suit, and you do see at least the joints and where it sort of peels back to reveal uh, the interior occupant. But again, you're not seeing a big red button that says eject. I, I look to Akari, um, and I say, can't you just tell the suit to eject? Uh, I don't know if... Um... I imagine at this point Akari has pulled up, is trying to find like a, or has uploaded the manual of this thing into her agent and flipping through it madly. Um, okay, uh, let's try this. Uh, suit, this is Officer Ikari, no, uh, serial number 493 beta 6, uh, 3, ah, 493 beta 6, 4. Um, your occupant is in danger, please eject. Okay. Uh, there's two ways we could do, go about this. Um, I would give you an interface, uh, but since you don't have interface, it would be your um, cultural familiarity. Mm -hmm. And what is your cultural familiarity? Uh, let me have a look here. Where are my ranks? Uh, it should be on the first tab. Yeah. There should be a cultural familiarity right above reputation. I'm looking for reputation. Bottom left side of the sheet. Oh, there it is. Way bottom. Uh, my That's a two. A two. So it would be a D10 plus a two. Okay. I've. We'll see how this works. <laughs> oh, nope. <laughs> Oh, nope. the oh, ones are out in force today. I, I just want to be clear here. I'm not trying to kill you guys, but this is just a comedy of errors that we're dealing with. <laughs> and Curb Your Enthusiasm continues to play in the background. Oh my god. All right. I, I will take full responsibility for what is happening. <laughs> Uh, is there like a phone or some way that intercom system in here? Yeah, yeah. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, 
let's resolve no, no jokes but this is a brilliant introduction for your character <laughs> this this is amazing all right so oh, how do you know my, my character's number one motivation is knowledge i want to know what the fuck's in this thing well, congratulations you know. you're learning yeah so akari uh you have rolled a one which means uh instead of xavier's suit ejecting xavier the assault cannon turns to you akari and begins charging so, Xavier, I need you to roll me a marksmanship versus Akari, please. Please roll one. <laughs> oh! oh <no. laughs> oh my god. This is a badness. I... I have no words. Just... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh boy. I feel like I have to do that at charge four because it's a crit. And the and the oh second D ten was a four. Oh Let's, my god. The dice fall where they may. Yeah, okay, this is happening. Yeah, um, this is what it is. This, this is, is what it is. <laughs> um Xavier, <laughs> I need you to roll me eight D six, please. Oh okay. Oh my god, my introduction to the game was killing Akari. <laughs> And I gave you the house keys, too. All right, so good news, bad news here. The yeah, good news is that your your armor does take off of that. Yeah. However, it does have a penetrating effect of three. So three of your armor doesn't count. Okay, so I have armor of eight. So or armor 11 normally, so minus three would be eight. Mm -hmm. So 24. Uh, 22. Yeah, 20, 22 points of damage. <clears throat> Um, hang on, let me check my character sheet here because I have 30 body, so I have 8 health left, mm -hmm. uh, which is thankfully just too above what would be needed for me to start making death saves. Yep. So the cannon discharges, and uh, Shogun, as Akari is struck, you immediately f uh, look around looking for any sort of intercom. Uh, roll me a perception, please. Oh, yeah. The whole time, Steel is just like, everything's fine, I have things under control. <laughs> I'm like, no you do not, you have nothing under control right now. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, it may not look like it, but I swear I know what I'm doing. I, I, uh... <laughs> I mean, I, I think at this point, no. uh, airbags might try and do something. Right. Oh, for <laughs> airbags, what do you got going on? <laughs> oh. I mean, airbags is gonna go, oh dear, the suit's gone rogue, and basically like, rush up and like, try to physically wrestle the cannon so that it's like pointing up at the ceiling and not aimed at anyone. Okay. Um, join him in that. I, that uh... Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll rush, I'll rush in helping that out too. <laughs> Alright, so I need to know who's going for Xavier's cannon and who's going for Steel's cannon. I'll go for Steel's cannon. Uh, I didn't know my yeah, cannon. So Xavier's was the one that fired, right? Yeah, Xavier's the one that fired uh, and what I'm going to do is throw you a bone here. Because it fired at charge four, it cannot fire again until the suit oh, is fully recharged. Right, we'll, we'll say there's like a beep, 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 zoom, or whatever. It's like, okay, that was definitely a full charge. Right, some sort of signal. So, uh, yep, so he'll go for Ikari's and just like wrestle the cannon up. Okay, so whoever is doing the main role here, uh, I need you to roll me a, let's call it a... I mean, I, I can see an argument for brawling. Um, let's do brawling, because I think that's better for you, Enzo. Yeah, I think that's, that is the grapple mm -hmm. one. Um, and then everyone who is assisting, I will give you a plus two if you pass the DV. So for every single uh, one of you that passes the DV of brawling, uh, you will assist Enzo's roll. So let's do Shogun and Airbags. Let's have you guys roll first. All righty. Okay, a 12 and a 15. Uh, airbags is the only one that uh, that helps, unfortunately. Uh, but hey, that's a plus it. two, Enzo. I'll spend one luck on this, so it would be plus three in total. An 18. So... An 18 is enough that you are able to push and otherwise uh, redirect the cannon on steel suit. And it's at this point that uh, we're going to go to Steel and Xavier. So what are you two doing while this comedy of errors is happening? <laughs> I'm going to tell Xavier, just jack out and you'll be fine. 
All right, you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. I have things under control. All right, Sheila, unlink. All right, and sure enough, you uh, the cable connecting your two suits retracts, and you are now no longer connected. The virtual display of the Hellhound vanishes, and you are now safe, quote unquote. Although still <laughs> writhing in pain. <laughs> oh my god! It right. carries in more pain. For the first of my three net actions, as I will not learn, I will try to backdoor once more. Okay. <laughs> Twelve. No. Still not enough. <laughs> Second net action, I will cloak to try and hide anything I've done in the system. Okay. 11. So the DV of any future Pathfinder checks for anyone else is 11. Uh, it hasn't popped up for me yet. I might just be slow. Okay. And yeah, an I'll take an 11. All right, what's your third? The jack out. <laughs> okay. So, uh, when you go to jack out, uh, what happens is the suit uh, opens up violently and literally ejects you clear across the room all the way over to here. And then, oh, shit! And then the, uh, the suit powers down and returns to its original position. And we are, we are out of combat now. <sighs> and probably because he wasn't expecting it to do that sort of Air, airbags and probably Enzo sort of, well, I, I I don't know how well Enzo reacts, but airbags definitely sort of topples over like on top of the suit as it collapses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. The car topples over, but for completely different reasons. Yeah. So I'm just stares at this comedy show. <laughs> and, just, okay, like, Steel. and I start yelling, Medic! Steel gets thrown onto the floor. He's like, yep. like you said, everything's under control. Yeah, and air airbags will actually like stumble to the nearest intercom and like, uh, emergency in the training room. <laughs> and I'm still in my suit, so I'm gonna go. Sheila, do you have first aid response? We do. Yes, you could use the tools provided to perform your own first aid on a subject. Is there a first aid kit? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you have the implements for a first aid kit, which means you could do a first aid. Let's first aid Akari. Okay. Um, I think we talked about this offline, um, but by default, actually, none of the pregens have first aid. So my question is, because I think what I said was you could swap out a score for first aid. So would have you done that is the question. I don't know. I did not. Okay. Um, in that case, it's going to be just your cultural familiarity, whatever that is. Two. Two. So it would be a 1d10 plus two. And I think actually the sheet automatically accounts for your cultural familiarity if your score is a zero. Uh, yep, it accounted for Yay. it. Nice. Uh, with a 19, yes, uh, Akari, uh, you are going to uh, be patched up by Xavier. And that means, uh, as I said, I think offline, that you are healing at a rate of your body every day that you rest. Um, so you're out of immediate danger. Uh, you've maybe gotten a little spray foam over the burns and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, antiseptic and uh, painkillers, uh, but you're still pretty banged up. Steel is still on, Steel is still on the ground. It's like, for the record, I did not cause that, as she points at a car. That was not me. The only one I have to blame for is myself. And with that said, even though I'm still bloodied, I still have my eyes on the prize and want to get in one of these suits. So, because <laughs> I am dedicated, it's, damn it. It's security should have reset. All right. So immediately, Xavier, after you patch Bakari, she like wobbles to her feet and goes over to the suit and, you know, steps. So about what time does the security get in here? Uh, the security actually hasn't arrived yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll get up <laughs> off the floor at this point. It is an empty station off. aside from a you know, three or four people, so... Ah, oh, yeah, I guess, like, the, with the typhoon going, everyone's out and busy. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, what I would say is that, Akari, as the suit forms around you, uh, a face from upstairs uh, comes into view from over here on this side of the uh, the map. Uh, it is our good buddy Petrovic, and Petrovic just sort of looks around, looks at the, uh, the, the ejected steel, looks over at uh, everybody else, and he says... There was call for help. I, I'm not. What what is going on here? 
just, uh, just everything's fine. Just um, uh, we we were just testing their security measures. In my experience, when someone says it is fine, it is generally not. <laughs> yeah, um, Ikari might need to get seen for some uh, medical attention after all this. Still, like, no lasting damage there? I, I, I'm fine, actually. Uh, Xavier distracted the... And you looked at Petrovix, realizing what she was... Uh, <laughs> everything's fine. Um, we're all fine, yeah. I Ikari just... Um, something went off, and yeah. I'm gonna have you roll for that one. Uh, roll me a conversation, please. But where is conversation? There it is. A 14. All right. Petrovic just sort of looks at you, squints his eyes a little bit and says, just do not be actually hurting each other to point where I need to go and get med kit because I have not done such thing in a long time. I'm very rusty at it. No, we got that covered. We were testing out the built-in med kit, too. I'm okay, as Akari says, as she takes her first few tentative steps in the uh, suit and begins to swing the arms around, chesting range of motion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine. I'm really fine. Yeah. I think air airbags will just sort of shake his head, go and collapse into a chair. All right. So I'm going to put, uh, I'll get these stats uploaded to uh, roll 20, but I've put in Discord what the actual stats are of the suit so that you all can see it. It's pretty nice. Oh, shiny. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, my question is, uh, now that the, you know, danger, quote unquote, is out of the way. Uh, how long or what do you do uh, now that you have, well, free reign again? Um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm assuming that the rest of the group isn't going to let me get anywhere near the suits. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so I'm going to go well, off, I think um... actually, yeah, I think actually airbags will like, after he's recovered, sort of actually come over and join you while the... Uh, Akari and them are playing with the new toys. I was gonna head over to Petrovix and ask, uh, um, so where is, where can I find, uh, Ryu? Uh, the chief, you mean? Yes, uh, yeah, chief, sorry. Uh, she is floor above. She obviously is where we left her. We, she does not really leave office that much. It is joke that she lives here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go talk to her. Very good. And then, yeah, steal you. Head on upstairs to have that conversation. Petrovic stays, though. Petrovic is like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to stick around and observe for a little bit. He's babysitting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good idea. Um, Ikari is just going to do some target practice with the various weaponry. Uh, see, if it, see if she can download the uh, hardware specifications into her agent. Okay. If that's allowed. Uh, I will say it is allowed. Go ahead and roll me a, uh, uh, let's do a cyber tech for you. Okay. Um, based on the level of encryption and the security features, I am going to impose a minus five on this. Okay. Minus five. A still 15. Oh, nope. oh no, oh, it included the minus five. The minus, yeah, that's with minus five. Okay, uh, I'll throw you a bone. Uh, I will say you are able to get an encrypted version of the schematics. It's a start. And then I'll step out and um, just say, Hey, Enzo, you like big guns? Have a go. Mm. I, I'm good with the gun. I do not like... Oh, that's fine. Your loss, and you know, what's Xavier doing? Yeah, that's a good question. What is Xavier doing with uh, all this happening? Probably stepped out and started nursing my wounds. Gotcha, gotcha. I would you... say because it was purely to your brain that uh, you have like a very uh, runny nose, but it's blood instead of like mucus or anything. Uh, the world's worst ice cream headache. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. It's like the, the two Kleenexes rolled up and stopped in there. Mm -hmm. 
my actions of consequence for others. <laughs> <sighs> is what it is. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm I'm just happy fiddling around here. Um once I've had my fun, I'm just going to go over and sit down next to airbags and just say, Yeah, you always seem to take us to the most interesting spots. <laughs> uh, well, kind, kind of the job description. Where were you this morning? I was uh, checking in on Hunter. Uh, have I told you about him? Yeah, you know, only in passing. He was an old comrade mm. of yours, wasn't he? Yeah, came over on the boat to Tokyo with me. Mm. Yeah, just, I go in every now and then, check up on him, make sure he's sort of keeping his head above water. Literally in this case? <laughs> yeah, no, his, uh, his flat's a little closer to the coast, so I figured it was worth checking he'd gotten out safe. Nice shrug. Pat, slap him on the head, or slap him on, slap you on the back. You're a good man. Not, not, <laughs> not much can be said about many of the nomads that can say they're a good man. I uh, know most of the ones I know wouldn't say that about me. Yeah. I shrug and just let let the um, just sort of try to laugh, realize, oh, my gut's in a significant amount of pain, and then that's about it. Yeah, you sure you don't want to see a medic about that? You it looks like you got hit pretty good. Uh, oh. Uh, no medic on site right now. Everyone's out dealing with flood problems. I'll see. I'll drop by the hospital once the typhoon's done. I'm pretty sure I'm going to live. And, you know, worst case scenario, I think Petrovich has enough um, implants that I can borrow some of his. You are not going to be borrowing <laughs> any of my implants, thank you very much. Oh, darn. But that chest module looks pretty darn decent. I am sorry it does not come with chest hair functionality. I understand that it is a much desired thing. Uh, I have no concern for chest hair. Yeah, well, worst case scenario, and he'll flick out his ripper cores. I have done field amputations in the past. Petrovic just sort of narrows his eyes at you and then just sort of takes a step back. Not really sure if that's a joke or... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and then he'll, like, retract the claws again. Oh, I, oh, also, that was directed at Akari, not Petrovic. But, yeah. okay. e even so, flicking out Ripper calls casually, probably. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a little anyway. bit of nerve. And Petrovic just sort of yeah. says, you are very strange people. I, I am maybe seeing why Chief brought you on. We're an interesting yeah. bunch, that's for sure. A mountain crew, you could say. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right, well... Um, we are sort of getting around that time of uh, session. So does anyone have any uh, scenes they'd like to get out of the way before we wrap up completely? Uh, actually, actually, I do want to catch up with Steel like, either when we get back to the flat or before we leave. Okay. Um, Steel, you were just going upstairs to talk to the Chief and Brown knows, right? No, I wanted to specifically request... Um, access or clearance to interface with the suit. Oh, she would have turned you down hard for that. She's like, well, if you want, you're going to have to, you know, join the Psyche Div for that. Even temporary and like, what if I um, what if I sneak on a little sneak <laughs> sneak in the tracker for Airbags' vehicle for you? Roll me a persuasion. It's mm. going to be a high DV, but go ahead and roll me a persuasion. And the rest of my five luck. So that's plus five. So 18. She'll say yes. If you can prove to me that you have bugged Airbags' vehicle, I will give you access. <clears throat> and that's when Airbag shows up. Not privy to that entire conversation. Yeah. So let me just uh, move some tokens around here. Get uh, Petrovic mm -hmm. out well, of actually, here. Actually, I feel like this would work. Like, is bugging Airbags is that... Uh, car something you'd be able to do like quickly so it would make sense that he comes up after you've done it because i mean yeah it would literally just like run down to the car and like stick yeah. a chip under the bumper or something 
because mm -hmm. I, I prefer that because this will make this n next bit even funnier. Go for it. Yeah. Well, so f f funny in air quotes. Mm -hmm. I run down and plug the chip on the car and come back up to Rio mm -hmm. and show on my agent the tracker. She says, all right, I will submit the necessary paperwork. Uh, if the board says yes, you'll have access in four to six weeks. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point after you leave the room, that's when airbags will come and get you and it'll go, hey, uh, I, I wanted to apologize for like turning down that deal earlier. It's like family history stuff. I sh feel like sh I should explain. Oh, um, it's uh, fine. Yeah. A bit basically, uh, okay, so I used to be part of a nomad clan back on the East Seaboard and over in the States. And, uh, turns out, uh, some of the inner circle of the family were police snitches. Kind of, uh, tore the clan apart. We, we got scattered to the winds. Girlfriend, uh, no idea where she went up. I'm hoping she got to Canada. So, uh, yeah. Iffy about, uh, officially working with police because of that. Just, it's a hang-up. Well, technically, these aren't the police. Well, I mean, technically they are, but, like, they're the psych div. They're more specific in what we're doing, and mm. if I may say personally, I under I come from a completely different background, corporate growing up and all that. Uh, police aren't <laughs> all that bad, at least not all of them. I've had good experiences <laughs> in the past. Uh, bit of a different story when you're nomads. It's a... Uh... Yeah, I'm very much also, a protecting your own turf sort of deal. I do. I'm. I know I can come off as naive because I am new to this whole life, but I am also aware. Uh, having being born to a corporate family gives me a very different view of life and has. Oh yeah, we're definitely on other sides of the river. Let's put it that way. I do look forward to getting to know you all more, though. Mate, mate, and he'll sort of hold out his hand. Welcome aboard. Shake your hand. Happy to be, Captain. Very good. Alrighty. All right. Uh, anyone else have a scene they'd like to handle? You know. All righty. So that is where we're going to bring session six to a close. Uh, wow, that was that was a thing. Um, so we're going to talk, uh, session times and stuff offline. So anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, um, hopefully you enjoyed what just happened. Uh, it was a thing, uh, goes to show that no matter how much GM stuff you plan, <laughs> players just sort of, you know, just, if I could I'm rip sorry. up notes, I'd be doing it. All right. Uh, but later stream, you guys have a good one. And thanks again for tuning in. Bye stream. Bye. Bye.